don't fall asleep. Dictate the pace. He first, counter punch. You know, this young man, he has all the skills, all the skills in the world. You know, the thing that, that stands out to me is that he's 32 years old. And I know he got a late start in the game, Tess. I understand that. But, you know, time waits on no man. I believe right now that he's ready to face a top contender and possibly fight for a world championship. DeAndre Ware, we told you, the full-time firefighter. Works at the Toledo Fire and Rescue Department. Works 24-hour shifts, gets up so early to get in his road work. His first appearance fighting in Vegas, and he does so in the bubble. Right hands that time that Nelson timed as both men opened up. See, I like that from Nelson. Nelson just taking his time, shooting his jab out there, letting things develop. <laughs> like where right now, Tess is looking to counter punch. You know, that's why you see both guys waiting. Waiting. He's looking at the counter punch, Nelson. As many fighters who fight in the bubble have, Ware is coming off a career-long layoff, a year and 14 days since his last fight. It was a TKO loss last August 23rd against Vladimir Shishkin. Well, Ware told us that he was in tremendous shape during the fighter meetings. He said he ran the most he's ever ran before. He said he ran about eight miles. You know, he slowly built up to it. He so doesn't know anything but hard to, work, right, you know, Timmy? Pick up the pace. Yeah, yeah, Tess, but I expect him to pick up the pace. It's the first round, you know, so it's a fill-out round. Good body shot right there. And that one. <laughs> One thing to note about Nelson is he got a 75-inch reach. You know, that's a long reach for 5'10". That's a long reach for a super middleweight. So he's able to dictate pace with his jab, stay all that distance, use quick in and out movement, change levels on his opponent. I talked about Nelson being better than what he looks like sometimes at first glance. It's it's the small movements. It's the little small nuanced things that he does, the feints that really don't jump out. They're not going to make a sports center top 10, but they may set up a sports center top 10. It'll get him in position to land the shots that he needs to land and pile up points and get wins. And that's all Steven Nelson has done throughout the course of his career. The piggyback on that, Dre, you gotta you gotta know what you wanna do first. Then just have a counter in your back pocket. You know, that's being a step ahead. Now, if you wanna be two steps ahead, then you can be like, you know, do like some of the greats do. You know, you wanna stay calm to be able to see it. You might drop that faint. Then you don't react to it. Then you come back to it later in the fight when he's least expecting it and make them pay and hurt them and get them up out of there. There's some blood coming down the left side of the face of Steven Nelson. You can see a stream of blood coming from above the eye. Where's just not throwing enough punches? Nelson's right in front of him. He just got to let his hands go. He got to believe in himself. 
see Nelson clawing at that. So Steven Nelson was supposed to be the fighter that was boxing, and DeAndre, DeAndre Ware was supposed to be pressing forward, and it's the opposite right now. We see Nelson pressing the issue, and DeAndre Ware's got to shake off the nerves and get going, like you said, Tim. Yeah, Dre, there's fighters out there, man, that every time they step up and level in class or, or, or even competition, they lose. They, they can't function. Sometimes that has to do with skill and ability. You know, a lot of other times it has to do with just your mental toughness. I mean, self-doubt is toxic for anybody, especially a fighter. So you, can, you can tell them when you're over there. Okay. That's the clash of heads that opens up that cut on the outside above the left eye of Steven Nelson. And that is what referee Jane Nady was confirming when you watched him go back to that corner. It was a right hand by DeAndre. Wood. Confirmed him from the looks of it, Levi Smith was working the cut. It's really on the outside part uh, between the ear and the eye, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Should not compromise his vision Stop. in that left eye as Nady right. will now have to untangle them early break in round watch. three. Through two rounds, Nelson enjoys a 35 to 26 connect advantage. That was low. You no, know, Tim, I'm not I'm not ready Stop. to write to, to, to write DeAndre Ware off just yet low, low. as a fighter who wasn't able to step up in competition. It, it, you know, it's still early. Sometimes it takes two or three rounds. I've been there in some of my biggest fights where you're thinking more than you're fighting. And DeAndre Ware, yes, he's a thinking fighter, but he's more a fighter of reaction and will and skill. You see him slowly starting to get going in this third round. Oh, Dre, he's slowly starting to get going because guess what? He sees blood. And when a fighter sees blood, he's like a bull. You know, it energizes him. And that's what we're seeing from Ware. Good thing for Steven Nelson that the cut is in the right spot if there is such a thing. It's on the side of the eye. It's not at the top of the eye where if it gets bad or gets worse, it's not going to bleed into the eye. But these are things as a young fighter you got to overcome because if you're talking about facing champions for 12 rounds against guys who have a lot of skill, they got just as much will and they're hungry like you are, you're going to have to learn how to face adversity and get through it. He's facing a little bit of adversity right now. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. You see, though, yeah, I was just going to say that. That head, Nady said it for me. Those heads are coming really close together. Every time you see Nelson step in and try to go down to the body, Ware steps in as well with his head. Steven Nelson is doing the right thing. He doesn't, he's not pawing at the blood around his eye. He doesn't seem to be bothered. And that's how you respond to a cut. You go back to the corner, you let the corner man do his job, and you focus on doing your job while the round is going forward. Well, the biggest issue right now that I'm that I'm having with Ware is he's not using his jab. He's sitting directly in front of Nelson. Nelson's moving side to side and trying to establish his jab and reach. But Ware's just standing right in front, not shooting a jab. Nice combination right there by him. Every time he works his hand, he has success, ladies and gentlemen. Time, time. End of three of our feeds off a of crowd. So does Taylor, whose perfect world this fight takes place in the Edinburgh Castle. It's interesting to hear all the different reactions to Ramirez's decision victory against Victor Postal. It was a majority decision. Scores were 114, 114, and then a 15, 13, and a 16, 12. And then last night, we're visiting with Robert Garcia, of course, the trainer of Ramirez, and he said, you guys know what it's like. But you got to factor that in. I think if Ramirez had, you know, the normal eight-week period without the delays, I think he would have been a little sharper. Steven Nelson with two punch combination to the body moments ago. Now right hand trying to get to the body from where? 
And to that point, Joe, if you look, if you read the bio leading up to that fight with Postal, Postal didn't quite do as much training. He wasn't in camp, you know, as long as Jose Ramirez was because he's an older fighter. When you get older, you start to train smarter, not harder. Ramirez is still young, so he's pressing the issue in camp. He's sparring against tough guys like Virgil Ortiz. That starts to wear you down. Very interesting point. Step back. Now we box. Thank you. Watch your head. Watch your heads. Stop. Let go. Step back. Try to time that right uppercut. DeAndre Ware is not fighting up to his potential tonight. He needs to take that word that's on the front of his trunks, faith, and he needs to believe in his ability tonight because he's got that deer in the headlights kind of looking. TKO originally took the belt off of Sean Porter. That could be next for the 36-0 pound-for-pound elite welterweight champion, Terrence Bud Crawford. Right now, the focus for Bud is not about his future with title defense, who also trains with the Crawford camp. Again, I'm seeing a guy in where that has skills, has ability. You can see it. You can see it, but he just doesn't believe it right now. He's falling short. You know, he's falling victim to the self-doubt. And I'm going to continue to say this. The way you get rid of that self-doubt. In his professional career, but we have discussed this with him before. He was cut once in the amateur. With now that second cut. And they want to monitor the vision of Steven Nelson. Dre, it was interesting also to hear Brian McIntyre, Bo Mack, the trainer of Steven Nelson, saying just like you're in the rhythm, just like you're boxing with your own. And just as a reminder, the first clash of heads that opened up the cut to the outside, the more innocuous, there's a good right hand from Nelson as now he ramps things up, seeing his own blood a bit as right hands are getting through the guard of where. First clash happened in the second round, Second clash happened in the fifth round, and of course, here we are in round six, so if this fight is stopped because of those cuts, we will go to the square. Nelson on the attack here in round six. And where's gonna tie up? Nelson's got it. Yeah, he's got to step back, Joe, and give himself some space and not allow where to tie him up and buy time to recover. Get space and land, that, land another good shot, a head shot, a body shot, but he won't be able to get that good shot in there if he allows where to tie him up and buy time. Where doesn't look good at all. Wobbly legs, circling on the outside, gets sent back. Here comes Steven Nelson, trying to finish things. And Nelson, maybe the cuts caused him to go to the next level. He behaved like a fighter tonight. He behaved like a champion tonight. You know, he stayed the course, through the fight, listened to his coach, and got a beautiful stoppage. I believe Nelson is ready to face a top... top. NABO Super Middleweight Champion, Steven Soko! Nelson! Nelson, he moves his...